This is the MMA Takes Podcast with your host, Brian Petrie. Hey. Woo! Gotta give me some of that podcast juice. What's up with the what's up? Woo! I'm excited for this. Pick them. Boys, am I excited. 14 fights in jolly old London, mate. Uh, awesome English accent. I know. Um, love the card. A lot of heavy favorites. I think, spoiler alert, I'm going to be a chalk boy. But I love a lot of these matchups. My guy Chris Curtis is fighting. I already gave some of these picks, a lot of these picks over at Anika Florian. Go check in Anika Florian out. I'm going to do a little more detailed breakdown. I probably am going to go 75 to 89 minutes on Chris Curtis's fight alone. Just kidding. I promise I won't do that to you. But I do have a lot to say about it. I've been hearing a lot of breakdowns this week, and I'm excited to get into it. And, boys, two parlays this week. Two. So, usually I give the extra slimy, that fucking... You know what I mean? That extra sauce, that extra slime. I'm going to give you a different parlay as well. So you got in the regular slime ball parlay. And then you're getting on top of that a separate parlay. I mean, you can add them together if you want. But the separate parlay is a little uh, a little four-legger that I like. We'll save that to the end. But we have picks to give out. I didn't do a recap show, so last week I hit. It was a, almost a career week for me. I hit Ricky Simone, 14-1 by sub, which was just kind of a crazy play. I did last bet. Thought maybe clip him, get a get a guillotine or some kind of choke. Kind of the way it happened. It was, it was pretty unreal. Schnell by submission, which was 8-1, to one, which was a crazy number. Vegas not going to make that mistake again. What a crazy fight that was. Unbelievable heart from both guys. Um, I hit Yair by an underdog, which was some weird circumstances, but it is what it is. I'll take the dub. I hit the Leech as an underdog, which I was big on all week. I just wish I would have went bigger on him. Hit the slime ball parlay last week. We are 9-12 and 12 for the year. Let me check my book, boys. Check my book. We are 10-12 and 12 for the year. Even better. I hit Algio Serrano Burgos. Got lucky on the Burgos thing. You know, I knew... Round one was close. He clearly won round two. Round three, he got completely dominated. It's all about how they scored round one. Jordan, 26 years old. Kid's going to be a problem. But the only bet I lost was Dong Un June. Dustin Jacoby. You know, don't call him Justin. It's fucking Dustin. Slept Dong Un June right when Dong Un June was getting a little loose, man. You know, he's feeling himself. He's doing one of these. And then, yeah, you. Fucking got slept. That's what's going to happen when you, when you fuck around with the kickboxer. Um, Wednesday takes was last night. Sorry, I, there was some problem. I think it was a YouTube issue. I'm hoping it's not on my issue, but for like an hour, it was when I when it was premiered or whatever the fuck. A lot of people couldn't watch it, but it feels like a lot of people have watched it, commented, go to MMA Takes Podcast, go subscribe, go watch that. I mean, this is what you're watching on. You might be listening to this is audio form, but Wednesday Takes, every Wednesday, just going to be on YouTube, trying to grow the YouTube channel, and uh, it's going to be a fun show, uh, you know, knocking the rust off of the old take machine that they call me. <laughs> Knocking the old rust outfit because, you know, I've been more of a uh, gambling boy myself. But uh, uh, I, I'm rust, uh, busting some takes off, you know what I mean? And then, you know, the Hawani thing. Some people in the comments said, hey, man, you, it might have been a little too personal for you. And I love the feedback. And maybe they're right. You know, maybe it, it's funny because, you know, some people don't like Hawani, so they're on my side. Some people are like, hey, listen, you know, you were a little uh, harder than you probably should have been just because, you know, maybe you're, you're a little too personal. And that's 100 percent maybe true. Um, my buddy who I've been, I've been friends with in second grade. We literally been friends for almost 30 years. I was seven and seven, but yeah, almost 30 fucking years. And, uh, he was one of the few MMA, really the only friend I had that watched MMA with and, uh, him and I, you know, we, we watch almost every event together and he, and he has heard me do the Hawani rant, the X rated, the hardcore version many of times. And after he watched it last night, he texted me le- uh, late last night and said, you went easy on Ariel. You went easy on him. So, you know, I, there was a fine line there. I had to play. I had, I couldn't go crazy. I had to just do facts. And I thought, you know, it's funny when people are, are getting upset about the aerial argument, they're only bringing up one of the things. I brought up three things. They can't dispute the other two. But uh, go to MMA Takes Podcast and have a nice little chat in the comments with me. Uh, I've been responding to people all day. It's a lot of fun. Also, real quick, you're going to see it on the screen right now. You see this fucking artwork right here? You see this gorgeous artwork this literally blew my balls off when I got sent to me. I mean, this is just beautiful. 
And I got to shout out the guy um, uh, unsolicited. I didn't ask for this to be commissioned, even though I would have paid top dollar for this. He obviously is a fan. He listens to the show because he's heard me say before, I love the GTA style artwork. One of my favorite games, Vice City, one of the best games in the entire world. He encapsulated that with everything that goes on in the fucking uh, podcast. His name is J Dog. I'm assuming his name's Jay, Jason, something like that. Again, don't know him. I'd follow him on Twitter. His Twitter is going to be on the screen, JG601. Give this guy a follow. Uh, I believe Christian is going to buy posters and send them to us. He didn't want any money for it. Uh, I'm going to probably put these on T-shirts. I'm going to send him a fucking fuck ton of T-shirts for this. Just unbelievable. Like, literally blew my way. It's a background on my phone, background on my computer. I mean, you got me flexing up top with an explosion, just looking like a fucking action star. Eat your heart out, Steven Seagal. You got Dog the Bounty Hunter in a bikini, which is fucking hilarious. You got Chalk Boy sniffing up that fucking chalk, that Coke, a little Scarface there. You got Timbo, my guy, rocking the Braves hat with a gun. You got the Slimer in the slime ball Parlay. Then you got Christian looking like a porn star's manager right there with the double strap belt. Um, unbelievable. I mean, this is incredible. I literally am going to have this for the rest of my life and, and it, it, it's unbelievable. The font, everything was amazing. So go give that guy a follow, go give him a shout. Um, just incredible. I mean, absolutely fucking incredible. Uh, I can't get over it. I can't, and I won't get the fuck over. It. All right, let's get the picks. Let's get the picks, baby. Picks, pick, pick, picks. 14 of them. Now my page is a little bit different. Do I have all the fights? for that? Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. Uh, so we'll go for Tapology in case you're following along with Tapology. First fight of the night, Nicholas Dalby, minus 255 versus Claudio Silva, plus 215. When I first saw this line, I went, Ugh. I was like, Ugh. I just don't love the fight. I get it. Um, you know, they got to get somebody to fight, right? Claudio Silva has been kind of a disappointment to me. He's, you know, you he is an expert on the mat, Jiu-Jitsu, and Nicholas Dalby's a guy who I used to kind of champion for a little bit. I used to be in the Nicholas Dobby camp, and um, then he let me down against the Jesse Ronson fight. This guy's iron chin normally gets rocked and choked out by Jesse Ronson. No contest, because I think Ronson popped hot for like, you know, what, weed maybe? Maybe it was Royds. Maybe it was the old granddaddy's cocktail, but I, I think it might have just been some weed or something. Goes in there, wins against Daniel Rodriguez, but did he really? No. And then throws up an egg against Tim Means. Tim Means business, baby. You know, and this is Dolby's a guy who's just not really good anywhere. He's got a lot of finishes outside the UFC, which is kind of weird because he doesn't seem like the biggest power puncher to me. Um, he seems kind of sloppy with his strikes, and, you know, he wades in there a little bit. But Claudio Silva is just not very good either. Obviously, he wants to get this fight to the ground as quickly as possible. He's coming off two losses. James Krause and Court McGee. This guy fights one time a year. Um, I, I just don't think he's a full round at mixed martial artist. So my pick is going to be Nicholas Dobby, but however, I'm not touching that price, uh, of, of minus two fifty five. I think Dolby's going to punch him up from the outside and stop the takedowns. I think it's going to be a decision fight. I don't see him stopping Claudio Silva. Um, Silva has been proven to be pretty tough. He's been in there with some guys that, that can put him out. And, uh, yeah, I just don't see that happen. I see Dolby, uh, you know, staying away and, and, and hit striking from the outside and, not engaging grappling. Now, this guy engages grappling. Good luck. Buckle up because you're getting something taken from you. But I don't think he will do that. So I'm going to go Dolby here. But no bet for me. Complete pass on this fight. Uh, official pick is Nicholas Dobby. Next up, Mandy Bohm. 7-1 versus Victoria Leonardo. Bohm is a minus 130 favorite. Victoria Leonardo is a plus 110. You got some female fights here, baby. Leonardo come out of the contender series, fought in the UFC, has gone 0-2, but she has fought some tough girls. Man, if you're ever heard of her, yeah, just a badass Frenchman. And then Melissa Gatto, who is also a stud as well. Stopped both those times. Gatto broke her arm. She's been out since the broken arm. They got Manny Bohm, I believe, representing Germany. Germany, um, she is 0-1 in the UFC, lost in United States to uh, Ariane uh, Ar Ariane Lipsky, excuse me, has one fight in Bellator, and and you know, and just you look at her record is two and three, three and one, zero oh and one, three and zero, oh, you know, five and three with a girl in Bellator. Lipsky, not the most world class fighter in the world, um, you know, but I really didn't like Leonardo's positioning. I didn't like her her mindset or skill in those two fights. She fought some two absolute studs 
when she came to the UFC. Farrell and Melissa Gatto are fucking beast. So strength of schedule's there. And Bone fought Lipsky, who is just fringe, in my opinion. Um, man, I mean, y- you got to probably take the underdog shot here. But I already have written down Manny Bone. I don't think I did too much research in this fight. I apologize. I'm lacking a little bit. I got too excited about the Chris Curtis fight. I got too excited about the two parlays I'm giving out. This fight kind of fell by the wayside for me. I like Boehm at 7-1. and one. I just, you know, I know more about Leonardo. I've seen her fight three times. And all three times, I just didn't like what I saw. But Manny Bone could be absolute garbage. I don't know. I'm going to be honest with you. I just don't know. I don't remember her Lipsky fight that much. And I didn't look it up. So, I'm I'm unprofessional is what I am. I'm unprofessional. All right, next up, Jai Herbert, minus 260 versus Kyle Nelson, plus 220. Old Jai Herbert, you know, a lot of England love in this card. Jai Herbert, this guy is getting, he's respected by a lot of guys in England. People love this guy. They've trained with him. He's trained all over. Good striking. Ran into a Taporia train last time out. Uh, hurt Taporia at least, yeah, buzzed him, hurt him on the feet in that first round. But then, you know, the big herp knock on Herbert is, you know, that chin, that chin, that chin just ain't there. Um, you know, he is uh, one and three in the UFC. They're giving him a shot here. This is probably his last fight in his contract. Um, and maybe, you know, they're putting him in England. They're giving him a favorable matchup in Kyle Nelson. I like it. Um, you know, he is a good size favorite here, which is, it's kind of telling what they're doing. Kyle Nelson, Kyle Nelson, who is representing Canada, Someone made like a big deal that he's representing Canada. I'm looking at his topology photo. He's from Canada. So what what article did I read? The monster, Kyle Nelson. Uh, this gentleman, I, I I actually don't know why he's still in the UFC. I think this guy is, is fairly low level. He is a little wild on the feet. He's not very technical. He is very durable. He is tough. He has no ground game whatsoever. His cardio is suspect. I'm hating. I'm shitting on Kyle Nelson, but it's the truth. You know, look at his fights. Diego Ferrara was his debut. Okay, ground and pound. Diego's a beast. Matt Sales, arm triangle choke. That's an ugly loss. Matt Sales is not a good guy on the ground. He got twisted. He got submitted by Jordan Levitt. This, you know, that that that's a bad loss. You know, that's a bad loss, Kyle. Polo Reyes knockout, which is a good win. Polo Reyes is a wild boy. Comes in swinging heavy bolos, and uh, you know that was a, that was a wild fight. And then Billy Quarantino, Billy Q, right cross round three. That was a cardio issue, and Billy just Billy doesn't stop. So, you know, this guy's got some good chin. He's got a good chin. He's got good power. He's going to come forward. But I just think Jai Herbert, if, if he fights his game, he fights his technical game, his long technical game, he should win this fight 10 times out of 10. I like Herbert here. The number is pretty big. The number does scare him, scare me off a little bit. I like him by knockout as well. Nelson uh, doesn't have the best defense, even though he's never been knocked out in the UFC. Um, I like him by knockout. Knockout for Jai Herbert is minus 115. Vegas likes by knockout too. Um, yeah, so I like, I like by knockout for Jai Herbert, obviously. So the sharps is minus minus one fifteen, maybe a pass altogether. Um, just because you don't know what that chin of Herbert Herbert's chin is just not great striking good. But at some point when you get your chin checked and touched as many times as he has, there's a, there's a bit of a bell that goes off a little question mark, like, fuck man, like, can I just not take a punch? That's probably one of the hardest realizations as a fighter is realizing I can't take a fucking punch, man. That just, Cody Garbrandt, you know, I don't want to speak for Cody Garbrandt, but he's got all the talent in the world. He really does. He's fast. He's, he's his cardio is good. He's, he comes from a wrestling background. He's got the good mindset, but you know his IQ is a little low in the cage for sure. But then that chin is just, you know, what? Where is it? That's got to be frustrating when you have all the talent in the world and you can't fix a bad chin. Herbert, same way. I don't know if he has all the talent in the world, but he's definitely good on the feet. And that chin, man, that chin is going to be a given problems. But I'm going to take Herbert here. All these are passes on me. I mean, we got 14 fights here. I'm not painting the board this week, boys. I got to pick my spots. Muhammad Mokhev. I, I can't pronounce this guy's last name. Mokhev. Oh, fuck yeah. I just nailed it. Muhammad Mokhev. You see how excited I got? Muhammad Mokhev versus Charles Johnson. Uh, Mokhev minus 460. Charles Johnson plus 375. Listen, Charles Johnson is a fucking stud. This kid's really good. This isn't just a short notice fight. Some dude from, you know, picking him up from Liverpool who's nine and six. This is a dude that's taking this fight, and he's a real deal guy. Um, you know, he's he's fought everywhere. He's on boxing matches. Big, big record over in uh, LFA. He's a t- I believe he comes from Thailand. At least he used to come from Thailand. He's got wins everywhere. He's well-rounded. You know, he's got a couple losses. You know, the 
You know, Brandon Revolve lost. Obviously, that that was the deciding factor, basically, who gets into the UFC. He's got a couple boxing losses as well, but he's mixing everything up here. He's trying everything. He's doing Thailand. Excuse me. He's doing Muay Thai. He's doing boxing. He's doing MMA. A lot of these losses also come back to 2018, 2019. You know, his last loss was in boxing in 2019 by a uh, decision. And then he hasn't lost an MMA fight since Brandon Revolve back in 2018. So this guy's getting better. Wealth of experience. He's 31 years old. I'm glad he's getting a shot. The only problem is he's running into this 21-year-old fucking phenom who might be one of the most confident men I've ever seen in MMA. And that's saying something. This dude is confidence is through the roof. He's calling out anybody and anybody at 125, 135. He just wants to fight. And he's 21 years old. He's good. You know, he's fighting out of England, but I believe he's from, uh, where is he? Dagestan. Yeah, so Dagestan fighting out of England, representing England, undefeated. You look at this guy's wins. Uh, only one by decision, or no, the first fight was by decision too. Um, all finishers. Kid's a finisher. Kid's a beast. I hate the number. I love the talent. So there's going to be a lot of big numbers on this card where I'm actually going to uh, favor the big number. I'm going to understand the big number. In this situation, um, you know, he's 20 years old. He's fighting a guy who's wealth of experience. I don't know how much I love that number. So you gotta you gotta play it down. The only I don't think uh, Mokayev is going to want to stand with Johnson with the Muay Thai background, the bo- professional boxing matches. Johnson's stand up is pretty good. He's got decent power. He's also very good on the ground. But I think Mokayev's gonna be a step better on the ground. Submissions plus one eighty, decisions plus one fifty for Mokayev. I think that's where people are leaning. My pick is Mokayev. Probably what I got here written down. I think it's, I just have written down wide. So it's a very wide line. I think Charles Johnson's a very good fighter. And it's going to look a lot closer than what it is. I just think Mokai is going to jump on him early and probably kind of look like a Cody Durden thing where he's going to look for submissions early. I kind of want to see this kid get extended. You know, he's been to a decision twice, but against a high-level guy like Charles Johnson, who's been in the LFA, who probably should have been in the UFC two or three fights ago. I want to see him get extended here. It really prove like his worth, but I, I'm high on Mokai. I'm going to take him. 20 year old, 21-year-old kid. Fucking, well, you know what I was doing when I was 21? You don't want to. Do you want to know? You don't want to know. Not what this kid's doing. Uh, yeah, but the official pick is Mokayev. All right, Mach 1 Amir Khani, plus 175 versus Jonathan Pierce, minus 205. This feels like a trap line to me. Pierce, all the rage, you know, lost his debut against Joe Lozon and has rattled off just performances after performances. Kai Kameka. Kai Kamaka, excuse me, ground and pound. Omar Morales, Rude Naked Show, Christian Rodriguez, decision win. You know, he's out of there in the Arizona, the, the, the you know, the lab out in Arizona. Card- Cardi at one point, he sticks to his game plan. He knows what he wants to do. Is I'm going to take you down. I'm going to beat you up. And, that, and that's all there is to it. Problem is, Amir Khani is very crafty on the ground. He's got a little bit of heat right now. He's won his last fight where he looked very impressive, where he's a, a, a significant underdog against Mike Grundy. Mike Grundy, similar style to um, Jonathan Pierce, where he likes to take people down. Pierce has a little bit more pressure, a little bit more stand-up, does get hit a little bit. Uh, I think Amir Khani is way more athletic here. It's going to be an interesting fight. I see a lot of people liking Pierce and they're putting st- stock in Pierce because he's kind of a hot kid right now. Um, but if you go to Amir, Amir uh, excuse me, Mach 1 Amir Khani's topology pitcher, you're not going to find a better pitcher. I mean, this guy's with four chicks, you know what I mean? And he just looks, I mean, they're all hot. And he just looks like a fucking G, Mr. Finland. However, he had some bumps. You know, Edson Ar- Ar- Barboza, Camilla Kirk, which was an ugly performance. Laurel Murphy, which he got knocked out in the second round, but he was doing pretty good in the first round. You know, he's fought to who's who. He got knocked out by Burgos. But when you look at grapplers, I mean, R. Allen, he can grapple. But when you look at grapplers, he's done fairly well against guys that can grapple, you know. Uh, Jason Knight, you know, not really grappler, split decision, very close fight. Chris Fiskold, all he does is grapple, anaconda choke. Danny Henry, good grappler, anaconda choke. Mike Grundy, grappler, anaconda choke. So this kid's obviously got a good anaconda choke. Probably got an anaconda in his pants. Um, Mr. Finland there. I like him as a dog here. Okay, this is dog. This is dog, baby. I like him as a dog um, at plus 175. I don't like a ton of dogs on this card. Um, we're going to have to dive deep in the props to catch those plus money tickets, plus the two parlays, which are obviously plus money. Um, but I like the dog here. I like Amir Khani. I just think Pierce is going to play into his game. I think Amir Khani is a better wrestler than the people giving him credit for. I think he's going to be pretty good off his back. Stand up, I think, is going to be on Amir Khani's side, too. I think Jonathan Pierce just sets a good pace. He's, he's, his cardio is phenomenal. Amir Khani's cardio has fallen off a cliff before. 
Um, but Mayor Connie is dangerous. You know, this could be a good live betting spot. If, it, if Mayor Connie doesn't look good in that first round and starts to fade in that second round, then just blow it up on Pierce, even though he might be a, a, a heavy favorite at that point. So it might not be worth it, but you know, it, it's, it's, um, you know, it's worth a shot. You know what I mean? But I like Amir Connie. Why not? You got to take dogs at some point. That's my dog. He's barking. All right, next up, Nathaniel Wood. Minus 520. Goddamn, versus Charles Rosa. Plus 410. He's minus 520 because he's fighting Charles Rosa. Charles Rosa is a guy who I've been bagging on quite a bit. He seems like a good dude. Boston guy, you know, from the streets of Boston. That's a terrible Boston accent. Fighting out of Florida. Uh... He was win loss, win loss, win loss forever. He's fought really good competition. I bagged on this guy about his his black belt, right? This guy must have a black belt and not getting submitted, as opposed to submitting people or getting off his back. Because when you get on his back, he flops to his back all the time. He doesn't get up. He's never been knocked out. He's a tough dude. He's an aggressive guy. His stand up is dog shit. Nathaniel Wood coming up to forty five after missing thirty five last time. You saw you also that picture of him where his veins were coming out of his fucking stomach. You know the healthier choice is to go up to forty five, my guy. Um, but Nathaniel Wood just better everywhere. You know, this is, this is what he is. He's better everywhere. He's a, you know, I would say he has advantage on the ground, even though Rose is a, a black belt, <laughs> um, black belt. And, um, so I think, I think that Nathaniel Wood could take him down if he wanted to dominate on top. I think he could stand up, dominate him on the feet. Uh, I like a finish for Nathaniel Wood as well. Uh, Rose has never been knocked out before. I think he's been stopped once, but Guy's got a pretty solid chin here. So Nathaniel Wood here by Chaos plus 350. I like that a lot. That's a prop I'm interested in. You're going to obviously get your money down on minus 520. But again, this is a favorite I understand. This is a guy who's really good fighting a guy who's not very good in, in Charles Rose, at least at this point in his career. He's 35 years old. So I like Nathaniel Wood, and I like him enough to put him in one of my slime balls. Well, the other one's not called a slime ball. One of my parlays. So I'm forever, babe. So this is candidate number one, Nathaniel Wood. Uh, I just, I just like the matchup. I think they're, I think the UFC is doing them a favor here. You know, one forty five. Charles Rosa is not a big one forty five er, and this is a good matchup. All right, Mark DeCasey minus three twenty five against Demir Hazavak. Hazavuk Hazavak plus two seventy. Man, I never thought Mark DeCasey would be this big of a uh, favorite minus three twenty five. But again, this is one of the fights where I kind of get it. You know, this guy's wrestling his last time out in Columbus. I watched it live. It was fucking impressive. He was taking Slava Claus down like nobody's business. Now he's fighting a 35-year-old who has no takedown defense whatsoever. He wants to stand up with you. He, he you know, that's his only chance of, of victory standing up with you and knocking you out. He's got big power in his hands. Well, Mark DeCasey has a good chance, has a good stand up. He's kind of um revamped his career a little bit with these takedowns. He's mixing in. He's becoming a mixed martial artist. And uh, you know, and Demir uh coming off the Anthony Medeiros win back in 2021, which Medeiros won that third round and should have taken him down earlier. That's what I see the path of victory here for, for DeCasey. I see DeCasey just taking Demir down whenever he wants. Um, I see a decision victory. I don't think either of these guys are going to stop each other. DeCasey's got a great chin. Demir's pretty durable himself. I don't see DeCasey being a big, huge submission threat. I see him taking down, beating him up. When they get to the feet, throw his kicks from the outside, beat him up on the outside. Uh, I see DeCasey 30-27, 30-26 in this fight. Um, I like DeCasey's newfound wrestling here, and Demir just, I mean, the guy can't stop anything, dude. Like, my five-year-old daughter might be able to, now, nah, well, you know, Winnie, you know, her take, she's got a cast on right now. Her takedowns aren't as great as as they need to be. I need to tighten those up. But I like Mark DeCasey, another, another candidate here, man. I like these England guys. You're seeing a pattern. The high-favorite Englishman. And women, maybe. You know, they're huge favorites. And I'm taking them because even though the lines are very wide, they're in England, which is notoriously known for bad judging. And the crowd's going to be absolutely buzzing. And I would love to see a judge give a close fight to a, a, a guy that's not from England. You know what I mean? Ain't going to happen. All right, next fight. Fight I'm looking forward to a lot. Luva Klein. Plus 215 versus Mason Jones, minus 320. Fight kind of came together last minute. Luva Klein used to be at 45. Now he's up at 55. You know, this guy came to the UFC hot. You know, he knocked out Shane Young, who was, was a pretty durable guy at that point, and then dropped a decision to Susana, which was an ugly performance. Dropped, uh, uh, got submitted by Nate Lamer in the third round, which was an ugly performance. And then another really close fight against Avante Smith, where he looked very gun shy. Well, you not better not be gun shy against Mason Jones. This is a kid I'm very high on. I like Mason Jones, young kid, 27, double champ over in Cage, uh, Cage Warriors. 
Weird record in the UFC. Lost to Mike Davis, which is an absolute war. Mike Davis is a complete stud. Needs to fight a lot more so people can know his name. Complete fucking battle on that. And then Alan Patrick with a no contest. And then the decision went over David Nama, who's become an absolute stud. So besides the Patrick fight, which he was dominating, which I wish he would have got back, this kid's been fed to the wolves in the UFC so far. Now he's getting Ludwig Klein. He's a good striker, at least on paper. He's got good kicks. His hands are kind of weak. I think he doesn't like to engage in a firefight. I think Mason Jones is going to make this a firefight. I think Mason Jones is better everywhere. He's a little bit bigger of a kid. He's going to march forward. I hope he minds his P's and Q's a little bit because Lubick Klein does have some good striking. Uh, at least he's got some good fucking uh, uh, power. But I want to see Mason be a little more measured here and get the finish. I like Mason by finish here. I like him by TKO finish. Uh, I think he's going to be all over Lubick from the, from the get-go. Minus 345 currently. Mason by TKO, plus 130. By submission, plus 800. By decision, plus 180. So Vegas is kind of seeing the same way I'm seeing it. You know, this is a, I believe he's Welsh, right? And which, again, there's like 10 different, or from Wales, Welsh, right? There's like 10 different countries all in that country. So I don't really fully understand the, ge- <laughs> the geological thing of it. So all my UK fans, I know there's a couple guys that are from Scotland that listen to this. I, I don't understand that. I know I know the UK is like the northern part and whatever. What is Wales? I I, I don't know. Anyway, it doesn't really fucking matter because Mason Jones is a stud. He's gonna get the crowd. He is an English. He's you know he's got you know is he Welsh? Is he an English? I don't know. He's gonna have the crowd. I think he's a stud. Give me Mason Jones. And then I got I'm keep hitting that slime forever button because this is another guy I like a lot here. The line is wide. I think the matchup's gonna be fun. I think if Ludwig lets it go, it should be interesting. If he gets stuck in the mud like he did against Devontae Smith, then he's going to get fucking run over. Either way, I'm making money off it because I'm high on Mason Jones here. Um, yeah, high on Mason Jones. All right, next up, you got Paul Krieg. Speaking about Scottish, sorry for all my Scotland listeners that if I offended you, but Paul Krieg, I can't, I can't do it. I know it's not Craig. Krieg. Paul Krieg. Plus 140 versus Vulcan Oznamir. No time. Minus 165. So this is this is a fight I've done a complete flop on. Picked pick Craig uh on the Anakin Florian. Was confident, needed a dog, thought he was a good dog. Obviously, you know, he can submit a fucking Vulcan anytime he wants. Vulcan's, I think four of his six losses come from submission. Vulcan Ozemir has been fed to the fucking wolves. I mean, this guy has been fed to the wolves, and he's somehow still in the UFC, somehow still kind of top contender. Um, because he's got that big power and will fight anybody. He's got the mindset. Paul Craig, have you ever seen this guy You know, stand up for a long period of time? He's got a good jab. He kicks okay, but it's like Bambi trying to walk. You know, he's just he's just so awkward. And Ozdemir's got fucking power. He throws short, big shots, and they're just, I mean, no time. No time. So this is 100% pass on the money line. I'm going to keep my pick with Paul Craig. Because I'm not a flopper. I picked it on Anakin Florian. I'm not going to change my pick here. I've had my change of heart, though. This is a prop pick 101. Paul Craig by submission, which is going to be a very low number because they're wise to it at this point, right? Paul Craig by submission plus 250. Way better of a number than I thought. Vulcan Ozdemir by KO plus 130. Those are your plays. And if you want to get even crazier, under two and a half is minus 225. Same game parlays on DraftKings Sportsbook. Under two and a half, and you can even add in like round one, whatever. Because I think if, if this happens, if one, it, it could be a really sloppy, gross decision win by either guy. I hope that's not the case. I hope one of them are going to put each other out. But I see it happening early, and I see it being either KO by Vulcan or submission by Craig. Craig's submission plus 250, way better than I thought it was going to be. Um, you know, I know he's the dog here, but that, that's a way better number than I thought. So that's a prop bet. Whatever you're feeling, you wake up. If you do, you're like me, you got this Midwest gut, you, you know, you, you sit there, you ponder about it, you think about it and you go, fuck man. Yeah. That's what I'm feeling. That's what you play. Both are plus monies. You can same game parlay it with something else. The under, I like two and a half is, is a gorgeous number as well. Minus 225, but you know, it's, it, it's, 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 it's mild chalk. You know, it, it, it's like Tums chalk, right? It's not full-on chalkboard chalk. It's just Tums chalk. You know, you eat Tums and a little chalk, you, you get over it. You'll get over the minus 225. Um, I like Vulcan by KO. I like Craig by submission. Pick is Paul Craig. 
Um, uh, but, you know, I, I, I flopped on this completely. Um, Molly McCann, meatball, minus 390. And guess what, boys? And guess what? I'm pretty sure I saw her go up. Molly McCann, minus 410. Holy shit. Molly McCann, minus 410. Hannah Goldie, uh, blah, 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 plus 320. That's going up as well. It's just on my paper. Really good matchmaking for the UFC. Meatball coming off that crazy knockout over Luna Carolina. Her personality is showing out. I love Molly's personality. She's funny. Um, she's eccentric. She's a team. It's like a team fucking, you know, what am I trying to say? Like, I don't want to say team leaders. I don't know if she's a team leader, but like she supports her guys. She's loyal. Um, you know, she signed with Barstool. They've done some videos on her. I'm sure this is going to get juiced up even more when the Barstool releases their, you know, their parlays with her and Patty and stuff. But I love the shine Molly's getting. She's an exciting fighter. Even in her early UFC career where she was trying to still figure out what kind of fighter she was, she was getting out grappled, so she went back to grappling. And she was getting out strikes, she went back to striking. This fight, I think she can put it together pretty well on Goldie. I think Goldie has no takedown offense. I think the stand-up is going to be in Molly's favor. Goldie has short arms, not a lot of volume. Uh, I think Molly's going to push her pace. That crowd's going to be behind her. Molly, the only issue I have in this fight is her defense is shit. She gets hit a lot. She's tough. She's durable. But she's got her eyes busted open for her. Broke her orbital bone. I would like to see a little more defense coming forward on Molly. But I think Molly's aggression here is going to be the victory here. I know she's 4'10". I know it's high. I know I'm Don't hitting this button down. a lot. But God damn it, I like Molly McCann a lot in this fight. Women's MMA, again, Achilles heel. Thorn in my side. But, man, I'm positive. I'm confident Molly McCann in this spot here. I think it's a really good matchmaker for Hannah Gold. He's coming off a good win. Um, but I think if Molly wants to, she can take it down. She wants to stand up and win the fight. And even if this fight's very close, I think it's going to look, look a lot closer than what the line suggests. I think Hannah is going to show up. She's always in good shape. I think it's going to look a lot closer than what the line suggests. But you're in England, and I think Molly's going to have the crowd, and I think Molly's just going to be a little bit better everywhere, cardio-wise, uh, stand-up-wise, and, and, and she can always lean on the grappling if need to be. So give me Molly McCann, man. I fucking love it. All right, next up, Nikita Krylov, minus 190 versus Alexander Gustafsson. Gustafsson, plus 160. Oh, Gus. Oh, Gus. So he retires, comes back as a heavyweight, lays an uninspiring egg, kind of retires again, or at least a long layoff. Now he's back at 205 against the old vet Nikita Krylov. What re-sparked the passion? Was it Cosmot winning in the gym? Was it going to Vegas and cross train? Not really sure what motivated him, but I think we're going to get a motivated Alex, Alexander Gustafsson. And I think these long strikers like Goose, Gus, I think they just been working wrestling, right? You know, he's working with some stud wrestlers. That's how you beat Krylov. Krylov is fight IQ is very low. The guy is nails on the feet. You know what I mean? You can't hurt him. You can't knock him out. You can buzz him. You can tag him. And, and Alexander, you know, he's a stand-up guy. He's a good striker, long, good striker. Has a lot of knockouts on his record. Crafty, you know, up middle knee and, and uppercut what he knocked out Glover with is beautiful. But you got to fight smart. I think if he takes uh, Nikita down, he could do well. And Gustafson has good takedowns. He take down John Jones. Now, I know, well, that was John Jones after Coke. That was John Jones after this. Still took the guy down. You know, Gustafson does have some tricky takedowns for being a taller guy. Problem is, is he just is he is he in it? Is this a paycheck? It's not cheap to live in Sweden. Very expensive to live in Sweden. He's got kids. Is this a paycheck or is this like I'm really back in it because I'm back in it? You're 35. Should I have to get out the pod at this point? Fought for the title twice, I believe. Um, yeah. So my pick is gonna you know, after talking all that shit about Gus, my pick is gonna be Nikita Krylov. I just think that even if it gets to the ground, I think Gus isn't gonna maybe be up early. Maybe take some takedowns, maybe whatever, but I just don't trust his cardio. I don't trust either of the guy's cardio. I think it's going to be a very, very close fight. It's not going to get my money just because I think it's going to be a close fight. I think it's going to go to decision. Um, I think Nikita Krylov is is going to you know maybe win a very close decision. If not, Gustafsson by submission be very interesting because he doesn't have many, but Nikita Krylov just falls into submissions at times. Gus by submissions plus 1,400. Are we going to hit another 14 to 1? I don't hate Gus by submission because I do think he's going to wrestle here. And Nikita Krylov has been submitted already six times this week. Has he even fought? 14 to 1 again. Ah, that circled. I just said this fight was a pass. 
And now I'm looking at that. That fights a circle. That circle. That pop. Um, yeah, my, my pick is going to be. You know what? Fuck it. Fuck you. Every, no. Yeah, I'm going to flop. I'm going to flop. It's Gus. Gus by sub is my prediction. I don't want to give out. I don't want to say Nikita Krylov on both both podcasts and then give out Gus and say, oh, I hit a 14-1 when I've never once mentioned Gus. I'm mentioning it now. I switched my pick. You bet your ass I'm going to regret that come fight night when he looks like a complete fucking dud. But what's done is done, baby. Complete flop. Let's go, Gus. Submission, 14-1. Yeah. All right, next up, Patty Pimblett. Minus 255 versus Jordan Levitt. Plus 215. A lot of money coming in on Jordan Levitt. This this line has moved a little bit here, and I'm very surprised about that. Yeah, so uh, Patty Pimm is minus 255. So everything's the same on DraftKings. I did see some line movement earlier, just a little. Like, I saw Patty at minus 240. I said this in the end of Floyd, and I'm even more confident now after watching a lot of Jordan Levitt's fights is I'm all over Patty here. This almost was my mortal lock. Patty Pimlet's my send him home. Send, send him home. home. Like, I think this kid is, is just a better version of Levitt. I think Levitt is not physically strong for this weight. I think Patty has sized up significantly since his cage war days. You know, he used to fight at 45. He looks big in there. He's in San Diego working with that judo master. Um, I think his striking is obviously a work in progress. His chin's fucking all the way up here. But he fucking hits hard, man. He can put you out. He's aggressive. Levitt's not aggressive. He's very like Ryan Hall-like where he throws a lot of kicks, stays away. You want to come to me, I'll flock my back. You can't really do that, Patty, because Patty will get on top. Patty is known to be a ground guy. Now, Kenny Florian picked Jordan Levitt. And I take Kenny Florian's opinion very, very strongly. He sees something in Levitt, sees something in the jiu-jitsu matchup that can be exposed to Patty. Patty, I think, struggles off his back when he fights big, strong guys. They take him down. They bully him down. Early in his career, really couldn't handle that. I think the move to San Diego um, is really going to help that. It's really going to fix that. I think he's going to be this bigger, stronger man in Levitt. I think Levitt flows a little better. His jiu-jitsu's quirky. That's from what I could tell on, on, on tape. I don't think he's this huge submission threat with Patty. I think Patty's going to take him down TKO him. I see a finish from Patty here. Could be a submission. I see a knockout, though. I see a TKO. I see, uh, you know, click, click him on the feet. Maybe put him out on the feet with some kind of kick. Patty's got very good kicks. Very long, strong kicks. Patty by KO's plus 200. I like that. Um, yeah, I like Patty big time in this fight. I just, I, I've been all over him all week. I can't get off it. And uh, I mean, slime forever, baby. You got to throw him up there. One of my more confident picks. All right, co-main event. Jack the Joker Hermanson, minus 110. Chris Curtis, minus 110. Currently, right now in DraftKings. Other books has Chris Curtis, a slight underdog. I got him right when this fight got announced. Caesar Sportsbook the only one that had it open, plus 140. Um, I have since went down and placed another bet on Chris Curtis. I'm going to place... I'm actually doing my bets on tomorrow night. I usually drive Saturday morning to Indiana. Driving down tomorrow night because... Um, how early the fights are, and, and my wife works all day Saturday. So we're going tomorrow, and hopefully Chris moves a little bit, but I still take him on, uh, at, uh, at uh, pick him odds here. Listen, there's no there's no doubt I'm taking Chris Curtis. He's my mortal lock. I've mortal locked him every time he's fought. He's, of course, going to be in the slime ball parlay. So let me break this fight down. I, I feel like maybe I, I didn't do the best job on the Anakin Florian. I feel like maybe I rushed it a little bit. So Jack Hermanson, right? We'll start with Jack, right? He has struggled with guys who are strikers. He has struggled with guys who are good boxers, right? He's 6'1", he's, and he's thick, but he's not hes not as big as I thought he was. I saw him and Chris stare down. Um, Chris is listed at 5'10". He's ever been at 5'9". But I saw him and Chris do the press conference. They stare down. He's not that much bigger than Chris. Chris has fought guys who are 6'3", 6'4", whatever. That's what he's given up at 185. You know, he fought most of the career at 170. Doesn't want to cut the weight. That's why he's taking these fights on short notice. This is Chris' eighth fight sixth fight i think eighth fight something like that in 16 months or something he, he likes to stay active right and his fight last fight was a month ago against uh rodolfo ver where he looked you know on the feet he looked a little um a little stuck in mud but that was because he's worried about the takedowns and jack hermanson puts takedowns way better together way better than claudio silva so i think chris is going to open up and trust his hips hermanson is a greco-roman guy and if you know for the casuals out there don't know what greco-roman is a lot of clinch work i can confidently tell you that Chris is strong in the clinch. I think Jack um, is, you know, he's a big, strong guy in that first round. He's going to have maybe luck with a takedown in the first round. I, I don't know because 
Chris's teammates have fought this guy and they know and they've given him advice. His last loss, his last fight loss was to Sean Strickland. Sean Strickland, good boxer. What does he have? He has a good jab. Chris, in my opinion, is a better boxer than Sean Strickland. Better, bigger power. Good jab. Tricky southpaw. Strickland's more of a volume guy. Pushes a pace. Split decision win, which was, was complete bullshit. Sean Strickland won every second of that fight. But Hermanson is tough. He's durable. He stayed in there. Edmund Shabazian fight. A training partner with Chris as well. One of his main sparring partners. Not the best boxer, but a good striker. Jack struggled in the beginning with that. And then he started landing takedowns because Shabazian gas. But... In the stand-up, he struggled. Marvin Torrey, this guy punches like my 18-month-old daughter. He's got no knockouts. He only has one knockdown in the UFC, and that knockdown was to Jack Hermanson. Marvin Torrey is a southpaw. Left straight, put him down. What is Chris Curtis? A southpaw. And I think Chris Curtis outboxes Marvin Torrey 10 times out of 10. Kelvin Gaslam, you know, good striker, great win on his record. Heel hook early. Kelvin got caught, but you can't take it away from him. A guy with a big power puncher, Jared Cannonier, he got slept in the second round. Then you look at Souza, grappler, ranch, grappler, reach short, grappler, tell us like this, grappler, got knocked out by Santos. Jack Hermanson, his game is get you down, get on top. His ground and pound, I think, is some of the best at 185. His submissions are tricky, but I don't think they're anything out of this world. Chris has been submitted one time in his pro career. That was Tom Galicli a million years ago. Don't see it happen. What I see happening is I see you have Chris coming out a little more aggressive, a little more elusive. I think Hermanson is going to start throwing some kicks. Chris is going to touch him up with a jab. Hermanson is going to go on for a few takedowns. When Chris stuffs, after their first clinch stains, here's my prediction. After the first clinch stains and he feels how strong Chris is and he feels how Chris's head position is in that clinch and I can't really get this guy down, he might shoot a couple more doubles and then Jack's not going to be Silva. He's not going to shoot 22 times. He's going to fucking switch it up and go, I'm in a box because Jack is durable. He's tough. He's got good cardio. Chris is going to touch the body, touch the head. He's going to do everything. I don't know if he's going to put Jack away because Jack is very good, but I think Chris puts on a boxing clinic here. I think he stuffs all the takedowns, and uh, I don't want to take anything away. Obviously, I'm biased, and I don't take anything away from, from Jack the Joker. Uh, well, hold on. Blah, 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 blah. I just saw it. Yeah, so Chris is a minus 115, so he's a slight dog. Uh, yeah, okay, so Chris by KO is plus 240. Chris by decision is plus 300. I actually like the decision at plus 300 more than the KO. Chris does have big, big power, but a lot of his power comes from wearing guys out. Um, and Jack has really good cardio. But when you get that body touch as many times as he's going to get touched, and, and Chris is going to be fast and elusive. And uh, I really hope he shows off his kicks. He doesn't kick a lot, but when he kicks, it's fucking special, man. He's got some secret kicks in there that I think he could he catch. Hermanson off guard. So obviously I'm all on Chris Curtis train here. Slime, slime forever. That's my guy. Uh, Mortal Lock as well. Mortal Lock. Got to throw that out there as well. Um, I love that fight. I could go on two hours of the fight breaking that down. I want to talk a little bit more, a little bit more about how Hermanson can win as opposed to just all about Chris. Every way he went can win. I think Chris is going to be able to nullify that and be better. I know Chris is better on the feet. Jack is technically better on the ground i just think chris is hard to hold down and uh, i think they're both their cardio is great it's gonna make for a really competitive fight where i just think chris is gonna edge him out every area here um and i just really hope hermanson comes in and wants to fight i hope he just doesn't hold on to him the clinch and kind of stalls out a little bit and just really looks for the takedown yeah i i I don't think that's gonna happen i think hermanson is gonna bring it to him but uh yeah i like chris here big time let's go Main event, Curtis Blaze, first time ever in his career as an underdog, plus 110 versus Tom Aspinall, minus 130. I love this fight. I love this heavyweight fight here. This is uh, this is a fight where I'm, I I was stumped a little bit on the Anakin Florian. I wanted to take Curtis Blaze. I faded Curtis Blaze more times in his career than I should have. And he's a very, very tough fight for Tom Aspinall here, for sure. Tom Aspinall. Um, and Kurt, by the way, a little side note, Chris Blaze came out and said that he took this fight for way more money than they've ever offered before because he took it on short notice, which is weird because his London card has been together forever. So what's going on? Was there an original opponent where there's not? And another thing before I give them breakdown, Tom Aspinall literally beat up Volkov, stole his back tattoo. Tom Aspinall got his whole back covered with that Japanese warrior mask. Same thing that... Sean Brady has same thing that Volkov has. I know for me, for being a tattoo guy, he gets his whole back covered and it hasn't been that long since he bought Volkov. And that's at least two or three sessions. If you're paying a lot of money, that's a big piece. That's a big back on a big boy. 
that's taking forever to heal. You're not training off your back much. You're not getting that irritated. So I might have just really went deep in my handicapping and just broke everyone's mind. But has he been off his back lately? Because, you know, he's a jiu-jitsu guy and Curtis Blades can put him there. Boys, let's think about it. Maybe he thinks his wrestling's so good. He trains, since he couldn't train jiu-jitsu, he trains so much in wrestling that Curtis Blades can't get him down. But the problem is I think Curtis Blades can get anybody down at heavyweight. That's just, you know, he hasn't proven it, you know, but I think he can. Anyway, I think Tom Aspinall is an exceptional fighter. I think this kid is the real deal. He's in shape. He's confident. His boxing's legit. He comes from BJJ royalty. I don't like that Curtis Blades is coming out already kind of giving an excuse of, like, oh, hey, I've taken this on short notice, by the way. I don't love that, but... You know, he's a legit guy. He's in altitude. He's always training. He's always in shape. Um, Yeah, so, you know, I I don't know what to take about that. But it's a tale of two fights. Curtis Blades has struggled with two guys. Well, no, he's struggled with more guys, but he's lost to two guys. Got knocked out by Derek Lewis, power puncher. Got knocked out twice. Kind of got knocked out. Well, he got a cut. They stopped it. But got knocked out twice, essentially. Knocked around by Francis Agani twice. That's it. The only two guys he's ever lost to. Tom Aspinall. They gave him this fight in London because, you know, they think this is the next fucking guy that we got our guy. We got him. We got the next heavyweight, you know, English heavyweight champion. That's what they want. UFC's got their own Lennox Lewis. And I think they're right. I think he is. He is that good. Curtis Blades has never been an underdog before. And this is interesting that he is. Um, and I just I love Tom Aspel in this fight. I think Tom Aspel's boxing's better. Um, a lot of questions need to be answered on Tom Aspel, though. How good is his wrestling? How good is his jiu-jitsu? Is he good off his back? What's his cardio like? You know, and everyone goes back to the Andre Olowski fight. That first round was a kind of a rough first round for him. I rewatched that first round. It wasn't that. It wasn't, I think Andre did very well in that fight, but it wasn't like he got 10-8. Everyone's making it seem like he got 10-8. It just wasn't the most dominant round for him. But he came out in the second round, switched it up, and got a choke. You know, submitting Andre Olowski is no easy feat. Um, but I think people are exaggerating, and they're hanging on to that Olowski round a little bit too long. I think he rushed a little bit in the Volkov fight. He got the finish, but I, I don't want to see him rush against Blades here. So you want to take his time. I think if Tom gets on top, drops Blades on top, it's going to be a problem. I think Tom is big and strong. Tom Aspinall by submissions plus 500. I love that line. Tom Aspinall by TKO. KO is plus 165. I love that as well. Under three and a half, 185. Over three and a half, plus 150. Vegas thinks this is going over. Um, Tom Aspinall is a reasonable price at minus 135. You could do a same game parlay there and go Aspinall, and you can go Aspinall by sub or Aspinall by KO. Um, I like both props. Obviously, Aspinall, slime forever. Um, I like Aspinall here. This could be a great fight. I, I can't wait to answer the questions that t- we have about Tom Aspinall. Where's the cardio at? Where's the wrestling at? And where is the jiu-jitsu at? We, we've seen him in the jiu-jitsu side on top, right? We've seen him, you know... Um, submit Volkov with a straight arm lock. We see them, you know, devastating on top. His hands are dynamite. Used to spar Tyson Fury. Never seen him off his back. His footwork's phenomenal for a heavyweight. He moves, I mean, six, five, two, whatever. Moves great. Curtis Blades, I saw him in fucking Columbus. He's a giant. You know, when I saw Dawkins, I went, this guy's a heavyweight? I saw Curtis Blades. I'm like, oh, no, that, that dude's a fucking heavyweight. He's a big boy. Both big boys going out of here. Curtis Blades, I don't think he thinks he's going to be a fish out of water on the feet. He's got a nice knockout over Dawkins. This is a different beast, though. This is Tom Aspinall. I think Aspinall's boxing is way crisper. I think Curtis Blades is going to need to take takedowns. However, coming on short notice, does he want to wrestle or is he just going to stand up? I don't know. I don't know. A lot of questions need to be answered, but I'm going Tom Aspinall. Boom. All right. That's it. That's the card. So I have T. Morlock, Chris Curtis. Send them home. Patty Pimblett. Dog Lock. Makwan Amir Khani. And let me get my book here, okay? Slime ball parlay. I'll get the slime ball parlay first. Chris Curtis, no brainer. Mason Jones, no brainer. Nathaniel Wood, I know he's high. I know he's high. I'm sorry, but that's that's the slime ball. Plus 188. A lot of chalk I like on this. We're not getting huge slime balls, but I'm giving you two parlays. The next one's the Beatles parlay, baby. The Beatles. Ever heard of them? My John, my John Lennon's going to be Patty Pimlet, right? Patty Pimlet, first leg of the parlay. My Paul McCartney is going to be Tom Aspinall. My George Harrison's going to be Molly McCann. And my Ringo star is going to be Mark Jacasey. 
I'm sorry, there was only three people from Liverpool. I know all the Beatles are from Liverpool. There's only three people from Liverpool on this card, so I had to throw somebody in there. And Marchie Case said he's going to win. That's plus 285. Two parlays, two parlays, two for the money. Let's go. And they, these picks are free, and they're fucking money. You know right? They're money. Sometimes. Sometimes they are. Sometimes I lose. What it is. All right. Subscribe. MMA Takes Podcast on YouTube. Let's get to 1,000. Wednesday Takes Feedback has been great. Every Wednesday, we're having a show. So please go over to YouTube and subscribe. Rate and review. Um, oh, and I got I, I to gotta read this at the end of the show because it's very, very funny to me. You guys know I check the rate and reviews on Apple Podcasts because it helps promote the show and it pops up in the feed and whatever. So I got a 64th rate, right? I want to get to 70. But it's very funny. Jo- <laughs> Jonah, uh, Jonah James with a Z. Super nice picks this weekend with the slime ball. Almost lost it all in Burgos. By the way, no punctuation. Oh, no, there's, a, there's an exclamation point and a question mark. Excuse me. Super nice picks this weekend with the slime ball. Almost lost it all in Burgos. I was shocked. By the way, I was following Twitter, but I don't know how to spell your last name. Tree, P-Tree, P-P-E-E tree, Peach tree, tea tree. Uh, well, stay, the, the stay tuned to the end of the video because that's where I play my my uh, slime ball, or excuse me, that's where I play my, my uh, Twitter tag. It's Brian Petrie, P-E-T-R-I-E, MMA at Twitter. It's like pee on a tree. I wish it was cooler. It's not, but that was a very fun review. Go rate and review. And uh, that's all I got for you this weekend, boys. Let's go. Midday card for us Eastern Coasters. Let's do it.